Shalom, this is Levi Shor. Welcome back to Swinga Torah. Right, so I thought this would be a beautiful Torah to share for Zos Hanukkah, for the eighth night of Hanukkah. It's a Torah by Rabbi Gedalia Shor in his Sefer Or Gedalia. And it's on Parsha Miketz with Yosef and Paro, with Joseph and Pharaoh, and then the connection to Hanukkah. I just think it's a beautiful piece of Torah. Hopefully, Bezrat Hashem, I'll be able to translate it on the fly here to you guys, and you'll get to see this amazing Torah. So it starts off, and he says, he quotes the Pasuk from Parsha Miketz, and he says, Vayhi Miketz Shinasayim Yamim. So it says it was at the end of two years of days, and then he says, he says, there's a Midrash that brings this Pusik, and the Midrash says that what it means is, me kates from the end, it means it's the kates sham lechoshek, that it's the end of the darkness. So zman na san liolam, that it's a time given to the world, that these are years that they will be in a fela, they'll be in like this great darkness. And why What's the reason that it's going to be the end of the darkness? What's the reason? So all the time that the Yetzirah is in the world, that's a time of Ophel, of like extreme darkness and Salmaves, like the shadow of death. And those things are in the world. So what's the Yetzirah? So if you're not familiar with the Yetzirah, the Yetzirah is a Malach. It's an angel created by Hashem. And it's, it's appointed to be over... Uh, the forces of evil. So it's supposed to test mankind, and then our job is to overcome the Yetzirah. So the Yetzirah has three jobs. The Yetzirah is, we have these thoughts in our heads, we have like bad thoughts from the Yetzirah, and we're supposed to say no to them. We have good thoughts from the Yetzirah Tov, the good impulse, and we're supposed to say, yeah, you yeah, yeah, want to do that. And then if Chas Shalom, someone does too many of errors, they, they fall too much into the trap of the Yetzirah, then on Rosh Hashanah, when the world's judged, it takes the role as the Satan, the heavenly prosecutor in the heavenly courts. And then Chas Vashon, if someone loses that case on Rosh Hashanah and doesn't get Kapara on Yom Kippur, it takes the role as the Malach Maves, the angel of death. And, but this is a beautiful thing. It's talking about the defeat of the Yetzirah, the final defeat of the Yetzirah. So it says that, he quotes um, a Pasuk, he says, Evan Ophel Vitzal Maves, that it's a stone of darkness and the shadow of death. So what's the shadow of death? Unfortunately, after Adam and Chava, after Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, like death came into the world, you know, now we're mortal, we, we're going to die, you know, after 120 years, Bizarat Hashem. And so we always have that shadow of death hanging over us. We know our lives are, you know, finite. And so we always live with that shadow of death until we're going to see that one day the Yetzirah is going to be eradicated. So then it's like, it's saying that it can be uprooted, that the Yetzirah is going to be uprooted from the world, and then there won't be any darkness or shadow of death in the world. This Kate's, you know, at the end of uh, the darkness, the end of the period of the darkness. So <clears throat> then it says, um, it said, so it's another thing, another thing that it means is that Kate Sham Lakoshak, what does it mean like the end to the darkness? It says there was a time given to Yosef, given to Joseph, that there was the years that he was in the darkness of the prison he was, he was put in. After he, uh, he resisted the seduction of the wife of Potiphar, unfortunately, for his, his great you know, strength in resisting her, he was thrown into prison for, I think, about 12 years. And uh, so how many years was it that he was in this darkness of the prison? And since that it now reached the time, in Parsha Miketz, now it's the time that, that, that Paro is going to have his dream. Because now it's time, that it's the end of darkness, and Yosef's going to be released, Joseph going to be released from prison, so Hashem gives Pharaoh the dream. So then it says, um, the Pashtus, so it's like he's explaining this, that this is the cause of the redemption of Yosef. This is the cause of the redemption of Joseph from the prison. And what was the cause of his redemption? The dream that was given to the Pharaoh. So, but the Midrash, it reveals to us that this is the cause of it. This is the cause of the redemption. Because, because, it's the time, it's the end of the darkness. The time has come to end the darkness. And this is the beginning. And this, you know, begins with uh, Joseph being uh, put into the, uh, the pit. He had this prison, I think it was like a big hole in the ground. It was like a prison. It's called a bore. But now the time of, uh, and that was the time of darkness. When he was locked up in the prison, that was the time designated for darkness. And it was a time... 
It was a designated time. How many times did uh, that Yosef needed to um, to be in this to be in this prison? Like how many years was designated that he would be locked up? But then when the time came of the Cates, when the time came for him to be released, then Pharaoh was given the dream. And this was caused by Hakash Baruch Hu. This was caused by the Holy One, blessed be he, that he caused the dream to Pharaoh. And then through that, Yosef would be released from the prison because Yosef knew the interpretation to Pharaoh's famous dream of the seven healthy cows and the seven thin cows. The seven thin cows eat the healthy cows and then the seven healthy ears of grain and then the seven unhealthy thin scorched ears of grain and the scorched ears of grain eat the healthy. And then it meant that it was the famine, like seven years of, of a plenty and good crops and then the seven years of the famine. And because Yosef knew the interpretation that he was going to be free. He was going to be free from this sentence in prison. So this, this subject, we find that we also find this with the, the Geula from Mitzrayim, from our uh, redemption from Egypt, when we were slaves in Egypt. And the Pasuk is written, That we cried out, like they cried out, the Jewish people cried out when we were slaves, they cried out and their, their cries of anguish went up to Elohim, the aspect of God, of, of like judgment. And then, and then Elohim knew. And he remembered, he knew this was time for the Gula. So the obvious, uh, the simple explanation is the intention of this Pasuk, this verse, is that through this crying out and the prayers, then Elohim knew. So through the, the crying and the tears and the prayers of the Jewish people, then God knows it's time for, you know, to, to bring the redemption. And then through this, what is given into his heart about them. Like Hashem knows that it's time to redeem the Jewish people from Egypt. So through this, there's an awakening, a spiritual awakening that happens above in, in the heavenly realms. And then this comes to the children of Israel. So then, so, so first, so what the Oregon is saying here, I think, is that first, like there was a spiritual awakening above, like Hashem, you know, sent a spiritual awakening into the world. It's time, it's time for you guys to be redeemed from Egypt. And then the crying came up, and then the crying and the screams and, and all the anguish came up. And then all of this was like, this is what happens in all the times of Gaula. This happens in all the times where we're redeemed. So even if it appears that sometimes it's like this person that causes the Gaula or something else. So this is very interesting. So the Orgadalia is saying something very deep here. Right? It appear that the cause of the Gaula here is the Jewish people are crying out, and then Shem's like, oh, I remember, you know, you're my people, and I'm going to redeem you, and I'm going to bring you out of Egypt with the ten plagues, and, you know, the splitting of the Red Sea, and all, the, you know, the famous story we tell on Passover, on Pesach. But what the Orgadali is saying here, I think it's something very interesting, that Hashem creates this awakening, a spiritual awakening from above, and sends that into the world, and then that causes us to cry out that we know it's time. It's time to end the exile. It's time to end their exile. And that's what I think he's saying happened in... Um, in Egypt, and he's saying, but everything is like calculated to exactly like Hashem creates these gullises, these exiles, and then it's exactly calculated of when it's going to be over. And the beginning of the exile is a time that's designated also, it's like designated to its redemption. So everything is perfectly calculated. When we go into an exile, it, it's supposed to last for a certain amount of time, and then we're going to be freed from it. And this is because of Kaddish Baruch Hu. This is because the Holy One, blessed be He, that He is the cause of all causes, and that He um, He reveals He reveals the time. Right? These are very deep concepts. I don't know if I'm fully explaining this. I'm trying my best. I mean, hopefully, you guys are getting some amazing insights into this. So then, this this subject matter is um, this is relevant to the um, the truth of the miracle of Hanukkah. So. Chazal says that Choshek, uh, so in the second uh, Pasuk, or the second verse of the Torah, it says, Haisa tohu Choshek al that there was toho, there was like chaos and, and, and desolation, and then there was a darkness upon the face of the deep, the abyss. And then Chazal teaches us that Choshek represents Yavan, the Greek empire. The first one, tohu is the Babylonian empire, uh, Bohu, uh, Tohu is the Babylonian Empire, Bohu is the Persian Median Empire, 
darkness is the Greek Empire, and then this long exile we're in now, the abyss, is, is the Roman, what's called the Roman exile. And so they're saying the Choshek is, is darkness. And, and they bring in the Gemara that, like, they, the Greeks, the Greek Empire, they darken their eyes, they darken the eyes of the Jewish people of Israel. And the Midrash hints that this is the beginning of a... Um, a Bria, that the darkness is, is, is something that's created, and that this time is designated for darkness. So the time of the Greek Empire is a time designated for darkness, and it's only a time, it's only this time <coughs> that's given for darkness to rule upon the world. But you would also have to understand that because it's Choshek al Tehom, al Penea Tehom, that it's like the Greco Roman. Like this, like over 2,000 years, like almost like a 3,000 year period, is this designated time of this darkness to rule over the world. So it's been a while now. So, but, but only that this time, maybe it's not 3,000, maybe it's like, let's say closer to like 2,500, <laughs> but it's a long, it's a long time in world history. But only like this time is given for darkness to rule upon the world. And all the strength of the Hashmonayim, all the strength of the Maccabees, was that they, through this awakening above, through this spiritual awakening in the heavens, and and there was this great ability, the great quality that the Hashmonayim, the Maccabees had, that they served as kalim, they served as vessels to receive this hashpa, this like spiritual emanation coming from Hashem, coming from the infinite being, that they were vessels to receive it, and they felt that, that it was a time of Pekita, a time of remembrance, it's, it's when we were rescued from Egypt, it was a time of Bekita. Every time we have a gula, we're, we have a redemption. It's a Bekita when Hashem remembers that we're his precious people and he, he redeems us. And that there was an illumination above. There was a spiritual illumination above. And that they, in the Maccabees, the Chashmanayim, that they were kalim, they were vessels to receive this illumination. And that that's the end of the darkness. This illumination is the end of the darkness. So also in the Gullus, in the exile, that we are, we are alive, we are alive today, and there's uh, many times, through this long exile I think he's saying we're in now, we, there's many times of Bikita, there's many times where there's potential that we can get out of the exile, that we can be redeemed, we can have a gula. And so, we find already that originally, there's many different explanations to explain the time of the Bikita and many like uh, Pasuki, many verses of the Torah, especially in Sefer Daniel, in the book of Daniel. And that these are all times, different times, in, in the long days of the exile, which already passed. So we passed, unfortunately, we're in the year uh, 5782 now in the Hebrew calendar, and we could have had this final uh, Geula, this final redemption, all the way back to the year 4000. So it's like, uh, was it 1,782 years? We we're really, we we're really past the date, and there's been many, many times of Bikita over this long exile. So this matter is that all of these times, they were times of Bikita. They were times of when Hashem members were His precious people, and in Emes, in truth, that there's this spiritual awakening above in the heavens, and that's a time for Gula. That's a time that Gula can happen, but. What you need is, you need to have Kaling prepared, meaning like the Jewish people have to serve as the Kaling. Like we had to be able to receive this great spiritual light and influence from above. And if we're prepared to receive this lofty illumination, then that generation, so the generation, the great quality of the generation of the Hashmonayim, the great quality of the generation of the Maccabees was that they felt this spiritual awakening and then they took it out. They took the spiritual awakening. They took it out from potential to like reality, to actuality. So that's, that's one of the things they did. So there's a midrash that says that explains that the Yetzahara causes the darkness in the world. And that the darkness here is talking, is not just talking about like an absence of light. Like, you know, sometimes like darkness is when there's no light, but rather like a real existence of the creation, the Berea, of darkness, and it says it says in a pasuk, it says Vayotzer or ubore choshek. We say this every day in the morning in davening and shakris. We say that Hashem He formed light, and he, but he and He created darkness. So the Ramban he explains that in Bereshis and Sefer Bereshis in the book of Genesis, he says that um, when 
darkness is written, it's written in the language of Berea, and that's a higher level of creation. Berea is a creation that means yesh mayayin, means it's something from nothing. So it's like there's not even any raw matter, it's like the creation of raw matter itself. There's nothing there, and then Hashem creates it. So Berea is a higher level of creation, and because like darkness is, it's a higher, it's a Berea, it's a higher level of creation of uh, something that's hidden, and it's, uh, it's, it's covering up the light. And this, um, and what it does, it doesn't allow the light to like be revealed, the spiritual light to be revealed. And so we, we see it's written like upon evil, upon Ra, that says, Ubore es hara. It says also that Hashem created Ra, he created evil, this higher level of creation of Yesh Me'ayin, something from nothing. So there is like the Bria of Ra. Ra is something that's also created from nothing, from Hashem. And then, I'm, I'm sorry, I went to a couple of Litvish yeshivas, so I'm not great at all the Hasidic uh, Rebbe's. So I'm not exactly sure, but he says here, Rabbeinu Akodesh, I think. Uh, oh, this one's easier. I think I know this one. So this is uh, this is Rabbi uh, Sadek Akoin. So he brings a kushya, he brings a kasha, a uh, difficulty in the name of Hamagid uh, Harebi Rebbe uh, Bear. And then this is, this is where I, I, I don't know the Hasidic master so much, so I'm not exactly sure if it is anyone. There, uh, there has a Hasidic background. Please tell me who uh, this rabbi is he's talking about. And he says, he says, all six days of the Bria, all six days of the Mysabrashi, the original creation, we, um, we didn't find a Pasuk, we didn't find a verse of talking about the creation of Ra. Like nowhere in the beginning of the Torah does it actually say like Hashem created evil. But he says, because when the Pasik says, Ubore es hara, and it doesn't say, there's no specific Pasik. That's a big question. What, what do you mean? We see this other Pasik, I, I forgot where it's from. Maybe it's from uh, Tehillim or, or, or Mishle or Eo or somewhere, somewhere like that. So I apologize, I apologize. I don't know where the other verse is from where it's in the Torah. It says, Hashem created Ra. But it doesn't say that in the beginning of the Torah, in the Mice of Reishis, in the creation, the six days of creation and the creation of Shabbos, it doesn't say that Hashem created evil. So what does this mean? So the answer to that question is that when the Pusik talks about the creation of darkness, when the with second Pusik in the Torah, second verse in the Torah says, with Koshek al Tokom, the darkness on the face of the abyss, the deep, it says then Chazal saying in the Midrash Tanchuma, um, they say that Koshek, the darkness, the, the darkness is talking about in this Pusik is the Malachamavis, is the angel of death, who we talked about before is the Yetzirah. So that's when evil is created, when the second Pasuk says darkness. So darkness means the Malach Maves, the angel of death, that's the Yetzirah. And we find that evil is the darkness, and that it's like hidden, it hides, it hides the world, and that it's hiding the revelation of the light. Like darkness is, it's like covering the revelation of the spiritual light in the world, and that this is the time, so when it says Miketz Haketz, or you know the time of Hanukkah, especially Zosa Hanukkah, we're, we're heading into the holy eighth day of Hanukkah, that this is a time of the revelation of the illumination of light in the world and the end of darkness. So it's a great time of defeating evil. So then it's a revelation of what's hidden, that the illumination of this light, the original light uh, created by Shem on, on the first day of creation, when he said Vayihiyur, the original light, the infinite light, but uh, that light's been hidden away after Adam and Chava, after Adam and Eve left uh, Gan Eden. So they left the Garden of Eden, but the original 36 hours they were in the Garden of Eden, the 12 hours before Shabbos and the 24 hours of Shabbos, those 36 hours correspond to the total amount of Neros, the total amount of candles we light through the holiday of Hanukkah over eight nights. So those 36 candles tap us back into the Oregonos, the, the original light that was hidden away, and we can tap back into that infinite light, that original light of creation. So he says in MS that it's hidden and it's only, um, it's only like in this world that it's hiding the, the revelation of the light because that original light, when Hashem created that infinite light, the original light, he said, Ki tov. He said, the light is good, by he or, and he said, Ki tov, the light is good. But um, but he's saying, it's interesting, so when we tap back into that infinite light, the original light, he says, then we come upon a Seder Nisim. We come upon an order of miracles. 
see, she says, really? So Seder at Lamila, he says, so there's an order like in the higher spiritual realms is, is that's the order of miracles. But then there's an order, there's a Seder, Seder at Teva. There's the, the natural world, physical world, what we call nature, which I'm creating is called nature. That's like the lower world. So what happens is there's a revelation that there's the order in the midst of like the boundaries of the world, like the definition of the world, that there's a revelation of this light. So there's something that's like supernatural that's revealed in, in the physical world. So then there, when, and then when the infinite light comes back into this world, then there's going to be no more darkness. There's going to be no more death. There'll be no more Ophel and Salmavis in the world. So only when this light is completely revealed and it's Shlemos, completely revealed, so then that, he said, that is the nace of Hanukkah. That's the miracle of Hanukkah. He says that when, um, that Hanukkah was a time, this whole time now, Hanukkah, especially the eighth day, as we're heading into Zos, you know, Hanukkah, this is the holiest of all the days of Hanukkah, it's the eighth day, going into the supernatural. He says, then this is a real time of the end of the darkness, a great potential for Geula. So then the light can be revealed and then he says, that's the revelation of the light of Hanukkah. So the light of Hanukkah is this great spiritual potential from above. It's a time of great spiritual potential from above that we can end the darkness. We can see the end of the Yitzhahara, uh, Bizrat Hashem. We can see the coming of Mashiach, the rebuilding of the Vesa Mikdash in Yerushalayim and Jerusalem. Uh, just really amazing, like lofty, like Torah ideas. I hope I did it. You know, <laughs> hopefully I did a good job of explaining it over to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you back again soon on Sweet and Good Torah.